Supercross legend Jeremy McGrath is still looking for his first Torque off-road victory. But Jeremy's childhood hero and Pro 2 points leader Ricky Johnson is considered to be his biggest obstacle. The epic battle between them continues here at Bark River where every corner is unpredictable. The mayhem is about to begin right now. Okay, Leah, here at the Boss Snowplow International Speedway, it's going to be a side-by-side -side rolling NASCAR type start. But when the green flag drops, it's going to look just like a land rush start. They're going to spread out, go crazy, and really stick it into that first turn. It's like a whole shot in motocross. And we are off and running. Here we go. It looks like Dan Vanden Heuvel on the point, taking the inside with Jamie McGrath pressing the point. Jeremy McGrath, number two on the inside of the black Toyota Monster Ride. Dan Vanden Heuvel, the winner yesterday. He sits in first place. Keep your eye on that ride. Number 48, that is Ricky Johnson, the points leader. And they're getting going now. And here at Park River, man, I love this strike because it's got a huge jump out here coming up. And we already have carnage on the track. Dan Badeau, number seven, watch this, into the big wall. And he collects up into that one. But the race continues on, no red flag. Watch it one more time on the inside. He just gets bumped and just gets stuffed into the concrete. Well, you know, you hit that wall pretty hard, Todd. No question about it. Meanwhile, Jeremy McGrath, number two, on board the Toyota Monster BFG ride out of Encinitas, California. Does the name sound familiar? Well, it should. Supercross Motocross champion. I'm definitely a finesse and strategy guy. I, I want to come back off the track with all my fenders and all my parts on my truck, and a lot of these guys don't. But Dan Vandenhoevel coming back and taking that line from McGrath. Hey, Dan got his first win yesterday. Man, he's feeling his Wheaties this morning. He's going at it with Jeremy McGrath, who knows how to rub paint. No question about it. McGrath knows how to find that perfect line. Jeremy McGrath in search of his first win of the season. He's got a couple seconds, but he is looking for a first place finish here in Pro 2. Now, he had an ignition problem yesterday. Finished 15th. That really hurt him in the points. It really did. It hurt him in the points for right now. But I'm telling you, it's a long season ahead of us here in the Tracks and Torque Series. Anything can happen, and he's right in the middle of the hunt. Dan Vanden Heuvel continues to lead here in Pro 2. Then it's Jeremy McGrath, Taylor, and LeDuc now moving up into the fray. But is Dan Vanden Heuvel somewhat of a local? He comes from nearby Appleton, Wisconsin on the Chevy Maxxis Ryan. Yesterday was certainly his day to shine. Hey, well, he's got those Maxxis tires looking really good. He's, like I say, he's coming in with a lot of confidence. And when people have a lot of confidence, you know they let it all hang out early. It's going to be a matter, too, of how well he manages his rear tires. Because in the Pro 2 wheel drive class, you get a lot of wheel spin. And if you, you know, you, if you're not careful, you'll spill all your popcorn in the lobby, Todd. Here he comes, Ricky Johnson, the Ansel Pro 2 wheel drive points leader. Had problems yesterday. We talked to him after the race. His arms were all pumped up because he lost his power steering. He was just muscling that thing through. But the smart thing that Ricky did, he finished the race and accumulated more points. He did. Ricky's a veteran. He knows how to handle these situations. He had a game plan. I try to get break into the top three by halfway point. From there, I can see the leaders. And then from there, go to work and try to win that, win that race. Hey, it's going to be a free-for-all toward the end of the season here at the Tractus Torch Series. The three of Todd LaDuke has now moved into second place, and Jeremy McGrath has slid back to third place. Was it this tap right here? Is that enough to cause a little harm to his ride? Well, you never know. Man. These guys are moving on, you know, and you never know when you make contact who's going to get the better of it. So it very well could have done some damage. But, hey, Jeremy's still out there going at it. He's in third. Uh, you never know. It's a long race, and Jeremy may be yeah. hanging back. He's a real patient driver, and he's in it for the points as well. No question about it. McGrath does not get rattled easily. Young man out of Encinitas, California, the Monster Toyota BFG-sponsored ride, currently sitting in third place. Ricky Johnson sits in second. Sixth. He is the points leader, Dan Vanden Heuvel, the big winner yesterday in round number seven. He is off and running, and I'll tell you what, he likes Bark River, and this track seems to like him. 
yesterday. Pro 2 conditions were tough. Points leader Ricky Johnson had his issues, as did Jeremy McGrath, but that left a great battle. Number 77, Dan Vandenhubel, and number 11, Rob McCachran. And what's that move by Rob McCachran? That's the old tap and go. And it worked out really good for Rob McCachran early on, but hey, it didn't pay off in the end. Vandenhuvel gets him at the second last turn. This finish would be reviewed by USAC, but it would stand. Dan Vandenhuvel yeah. would get his first victory in Pro 2. Another guy we got to keep our eyes on in this race, Todd, is Todd LaDuke. He's moved up into second place, and he's got that Rockstar truck really looking good this year, and he's right in the mix once again, so don't count him out. Todd LaDuke also looking for his first finish. His best finish, second place in Cranon, Wisconsin, out of Cherry Valley, California. Part of the LaDuke racing family, very strong roots out west, and they are very experienced. We are lap number three. Traxxas Torque Racing, presented by Amsoil, is brought to you by Put Your Soul. Just like other forms of motorsports, the Traxxas Torque Series takes a unique combination of machinery and driver ability. You look at all the NASCAR guys, they're all capable of winning, but if you have that right car, so it's a 95% car, 5% driver. Here, I'm going to say 60% car, 40% driver. We're on dirt. so. Compared to asphalt, we're sliding around. We're in control about 50 to 75% of the time. The rest of the time, we're sliding sideways. We're in the air. We're being tangled up or touched by other trucks, so it's affecting. So there's definitely a lot more going on, in my opinion, in off-road racing than there is in asphalt. There you get a good look at the number 11 of Rob McCacker. He was involved with an incident with Dan Vandenhuvel yesterday. A great race on the very last lap. But look at this. The best drivers in the business are here, and they are putting it all on the line at Bark River. Now you see those different lines they were taking? Two different strategies. You know, that's an indication of the changes made here at Bark River by the new crew here at Bark River. They wanted to get more passing lines. Scotty Taylor thought it was better to go wide. The veteran Rob McCacker took to the inside. They're still neck and neck. I don't know what was the best line, but at least we got some lines to choose from now. Rob Bob McCacker and the Rockstar Ford out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll tell you what, his tires are hooking up. You see him coming around there. He is getting plenty of bite at high speeds. Hey, it's probably those new BFG. BF Goodrich came out with a new compound, a new tread pack. McCacker lurks in fifth place right now. Dan Vandenhuvel, number 77, right there, he is your leader. My favorite is in the moguls. The more rhythm, the more upset a truck can get, that's where I'll make my moves. He won yesterday. Like I say, he's got the confidence going on, and hey, he's going to be a guy we got to keep our eye on. Keeping our eye also on the man who sits in second place right now. That is Todd LaDuke out of Cherry Valley, California. He is really applying the pressure now on Vandenhoek. Hey, he's got that Ford coming in there. He's about to stick that F-150 right in the way. And the word for the track is Dan Vanden Heuvel may be having some problems on that left rear tire. You know Todd LaDuke is keeping his eye on that because he is reeling in. But LaDuke's got issues also because Jeremy McGrath has found his mojo once again. And look at that. The left rear looks low there for Vanden Heuvel. Hey, that may be why he's going so fast. You know, if you let too much air out of the tire, you really hook up good. You know, the rules here in the Traxxas Torque Series, you got to have at least 13 pounds of pressure in those tires. And if he went to the line with less than 13 pounds, of air, he's going to get docked. He's going to get penalized by the USAC officials. But the point I'm making is right now, if he's lost some air, it may be causing him to hook up even better. Van and Hubel continues to lead. And remember, the first man that crosses the line for the competition yellow picks up two points. Second place gets one. Third place, pat on the back. So you win and you win and you lead at the halfway point. You can pick up 27 points for the stop. And it looks like Van and Hubel starting to yield some more space. And look at that to the inside. Jeremy McGrath goes. And it looks like Todd LaDuke will get the two points. But did Jeremy McGrath get second or did Van and Hubel hold on for that point? Hey, I I believe old Jeremy's playing possum on us. He was kind of laying back. You see that? We, we thought he was having all kinds of problems and stuff. We were talking about him, and all of a sudden, right at the competition concert, bam, here comes Jeremy McGrath. Dan Vandenhuvel into the pit. So the competition caution comes out. They'll bunch him back up one more time. And we hope Dan Vandenhuvel can get back into this race because he had a great first half. Here's the competition caution, the last two turns. Look at Jeremy McGrath. Man, that reminds me of his Supercross days, Doc. 
He squared it off. Only thing he was missing was a knack-knack. There's Leduc dating around Vanden Heuvel. And at the line, well, that's close, but it looks like Vanden Heuvel did just barely hold on. Let's check in right now with Leah Pruitt. Down here, Dan Vanden Heuvel came in to replace his left rear Max's tire, but it looks like they're having a little bit of trouble jacking it up. Hopefully he'll make it back out to get back on the right lap. All right, thank you, Leah. The second half of Pro 2 set to go. Here's how they stand coming in. Todd LaDuke in first, Dan Vanden Heuvel in second, Jeremy McGrath in third, and there you see the points leader, Ricky Johnson, sitting sixth. But Dan Vanden Heuvel had to make a change. He was not able to get that tire change quickly, so he is bombing his way around, and the yeah. green flag is out. So Vanden Heuvel basically goes to last. Todd LaDuke will lead them into the first corner with number two, Jeremy McGrath, close behind. Hey, look at Rob McCacker. Don't count Rob out. He's got a sour taste in his mouth from yesterday, so you know he wants this one bad. Ricky Johnson, the points leader, number 48 there, sitting in fifth place right now. And the dust is just being kicked up. Up front, Todd LaDuke enjoying clean air. Jeremy McGrath also making it happen. Hey, these restarts are really important because they get bunched back up again. And I noticed in all that mess inside there that Ricky Johnson got really slammed hard. We got to take a look and see if, uh, if he got any damage from all that carnage. The number eight of Scott Taylor working his way through, currently sitting in fifth place here on the restart. So four laps to go here in Pro 2 Bark River International Raceway. This is the Traxxas Torque Series, stop number four, round number eight. And look at McGrath, I think you might be right. He oh, might have man. been playing some possums. We go back and look at the restart one more time. McGrath on the left side of your screen, Todd Luke in the center. It looked like Jeremy was trying to set him up to go to the inside, but when Jeremy got to the inside, look who was sitting right there. Rob McCachran. Man, that's just really good racing by some veteran Pro 2 drivers right there. What are you doing? Still to go as we come around the corner one more time. There is the three of Todd LaDuke looking very strong. Dan Vanden will try to get back in the mix, but he had the tire issue during the competition caution. Hey, Jeremy McGrath out front for hopefully his first win of the season. If you're a Jeremy McGrath fan, he's got to be uh, feeling comfortable out there, though, Todd, because he's done this many times in the Supercross. And McGrath made the pass on Todd LaDuke, who is sliding back now because McCachran has moved moved out, and Jeremy McGrath, as you said, he's got the two second place finishes, but for one of the greatest Supercross motocrosses of all time, second place is the first place loser. All right, that's right, but here comes the big jump. These guys are jumping over 150 feet off of this jump. I talked to Jeremy McGrath. He says this jump scares him to death, man. And if it scares Jeremy McGrath to death, it must be big. Look at the distance. <laughs> Scare me too. What do you think? <laughs> the monster Toyota clears it no problem. It's Jeremy McGrath out of Encinitas, California, has the truck hooking up, looking for win number one of the Traxxas Torque Series. But here comes Rob McCachran. Listen to those engines roar. Let's get torqued up. story, though, is maybe Ricky Johnson, the points leader, had his problems yesterday, and it seems like they follow him here into round number eight because he's sitting in fifth place. Knowing Ricky, he's, he may have some type of an issue because he normally don't hold back, but he may be waiting for some carnage in front of him. He's going to come flying in there at the end, so don't count him out. In, in this torque racing, a lot of things happen on the last two laps. We've seen it over and over again. So Ricky may just be playing smart today. Ricky had a 10-point lead coming in there, and there are the two men out in front. Jeremy McGrath, number two, on board the Monster Toyota. Next to him, Rob McCachron on the Rockstar Ford out of Las Vegas, Nevada. They continue to battle, and I'll tell you what, Jeremy McGrath got a much better vantage point. He is not getting the roost, and he's not going through the dust. I mean, this track looks like blue groove, like, in, you know, it's the term is used in Super Cross when the track gets really hard and rubber gets down in the dirt, it's called blue groove. That's the way it's looking out there in some of these turns. So it's going to have a huge impact on the tires, especially in the Pro 2s where they get a lot of rear wheel spin. McGrath and McCachran out in front. The white flag is out. This is the final lap. Will this be the day that Jeremy McGrath gets his first victory in Pro 2? Rob McCachran to the inside. Now this is about as good as it gets, man. You got two legends in the sport 
Rock right here, Jeremy McGrath, a superstar. We got another superstar in Rob McCachron, and it looks like McCachron's made the pass. Rob McCachron made the pass, but remember yesterday he made a similar pass on Dan Vandenhuvel, and Vandenhuvel got it back on the second to last turn. So McGrath is going to drive the wheels off this Toyota to try to get that victory. Keep her steady, Jeremy. Keep her steady here. You need the points. You got a good run going. Don't go crazy here. Both men very comfortable in the air as they come around one more time. McGrath on the gas to the inside, but it is hooking up for Rob McCachron. McCachron continues to lead. McGrath looking for a spot. The number two trying to get around the number 11. I tell you, this is a good race, and I believe Rob's not going to make the same mistake he made yesterday. He's going to hang on here, but Jeremy's riding a smart race. He could have panicked, man. He could have panicked. Jeremy McGrath staying very cool inside there. You know, he races for Johnny Greaves, and Johnny said in preseason testing that McGrath convinced him he could win, so Johnny Greaves hired him. Smart move. Very smart move. You know, Jeremy said it himself. He's kind of a rookie this season, and he's already finishing on the podium all the time. And your winner, Rob McCachron. He last won here in 2001 in a Pro 4x4 truck. He does it today in the Pro 2s. Jeremy McGrath will have to settle for second. And Jeremy McGrath in the mix all day. Looked like he was going to get win number one. McGrath aggressive all day long. He was right here making an aggressive move. Tap LeDuc, we're going to hear about that, I guarantee you. And right there, Rob McCachron saw a window of opportunity just when it looked like Jeremy McGrath was going to be on the top step of the podium. Rob McCachron came in and spoiled the party. Hey, sometimes it's a game of inches. His rear end popped out just a little, opened the door to the inside for a veteran Rob McCachron. He jumps in and he's letting it rip down the straightaway. Heartbreaking for Jeremy McGrath. As we go to the final results in Pro 2, let's go down to Leah Pruitt, who's with our winner. Rob, you were behind him so long, but was it your strategy to pass him up on that very last lap? Well, no, it wasn't the strategy. We'd like to get to the front right away, but, um, you know, Jeremy ran it super strong. I know he's going to win one, one of these races pretty quick. Jeremy, you were so close to getting your monster ride to that victory lane. How frustrated are you? Yeah, it's it's a bummer to lose it on the last lap. However, I did mess up the rhythm a little bit and got, gave her up a chance to get beside me. Man, I drove the wheels off that Monster Energy Toyota. Rob's got a lot of experience, and I'm the new guy, so I learned a little bit there, but it was a great race. Todd, this track seemed to be extremely dusty. How much of a factor was that for you? Oh, my gosh, man. I, I uh, took it for granted at the start. I was second place, clean air. I passed Van Hoover right there at the caution when I wanted to, and, uh, you know, Jeremy did a bad move on me, man. He hit me real hard in the front end, almost sent me off the track. I got collected myself, got going again. Wow, it was super dusty. So after eight rounds in the Amsoil Pro two-wheel drive division, it is Ricky Johnson holding on with a one-point lead. We are ready for Pro Lights from Bark River International Raceway. On a picture-perfect day, track conditions are outstanding. Chad Horde, he starts sixth. This is an inverted format because he is our points leader. Chad Horde has just a 12-point lead. He got the point lead yesterday in round number seven. Yes, and this is a hometown battle between Jeff Kincaid and Chad Horde. They're both considered local boys, even though Chad Horde's from just right up the street at Fells, Michigan. It's going to be a shootout probably between these two guys because they've been here for so long. And we are off and running in Bark River, Michigan. And it looks like Casey Curry pulling out the whole shot for Monster Energy. Casey Curry, number two in the Monster Black car, and he has got a great line, but he's got company on the inside. Marty Hart takes it away. Oh, look at Federal Rico ramming and jamming right already in the first turn. You got to watch that guy. He's trouble. Number 24, Steven Federico, and he turns around Jeff Kincaid. Chad Horton, number nine, also into the mix, but it's Jeff Kincaid who comes to a complete stop. Well, Casey Curry, and it looks like Chris Brantz right on his tail, but those boys are already racing dirty, Todd. Already racing dirty. Let's look at it one more time. Keep your eye on Kincaid, number four. Federico, number 24. Chad Horst, number nine, our points leader. A tough way to start, and right off the bat, Chad Horde is off the track. Well, that's a tough break for Chad Horde. He come out and had a great day yesterday taking the win, and already in the first turn, all that, I got to call it dirty driving right in the first turn by Steven Federico, and Chad paid the price. Leah has more. What do you think happened on that turn? I'm not really 
sure we're just all coming down there in the start and Jeff got sideways. I don't know if somebody put him sideways or he just got put sideways. We're all bunched up and I think it was him I ended up hitting into and it, they tell me it broke the spindle off. That's a tough break for Chad Horde, but who knows, he may be able to get back in this race. Marty Hart, though, leads him. Remember, we are going nine laps halfway through, though, we will have the competition caution. Marty Hart continues to lead the Pro Lights. This is the light-duty two-wheel drive truck division, 300 horsepower, suspension about 12 inches to the front, 14 to the back, weighing in around 2,800 pounds. And right now, Marty Hart is on fire on the course here at Bark River. He has had three straight podium finishes after posting three straight finishes of 12 or worse. So I'd say the season is coming to Marty Hart. It's really a little early to start worrying about the points right now, but all you can do is keep winning, keep finishing on the podium. He's really got a lot of confidence coming into this weekend. He's got that look about him like a Cheshire cat, man. He's grinning because he feels really good about his truck. He says he's made a lot of changes this year, bringing on Fox Shock, doing a lot of adjustments in between races. And, you know, and like I say, Marty Hart, this is not his first rodeo. He's doing very well today. Casey Curry sits in the number two position. Curry, the number two car, Monster Energy Nissan. Behind him, though, Chris Brandt, the Toyota, trying to reel him in, currently sitting in third place. Now, remember, for a win, you get 25 points. Chad Hort, our points leader, he had a 12-point lead over Jeff Kincaid, so if he can't get back on the track, that's gone. Plus, you factor in at the halfway point when the competition caution comes out. If you're the first man there, you get two more points. So Marty Hart could have a 27-point weekend. Hey, he's looking big for Marty Hart. Casey Curry, big air at Bark River. This track is probably Supercross and Millercross combined. We got the biggest jumps we've ever had and, and uh, the tightest corners, and we got the longest straightaways. Marty Hart has certainly figured this track out. Well, you see how smooth he's lo he looks out there? It's, it's in the suspension. You know, some drivers will tell you the single most important thing here, almost as much as horsepower, is the suspension setup. And we talked to Marty a lot about that because he's really a good suspension guy. He's got those Fox shocks really looking good, you know, based on what we're seeing today so far. And here's Leah with this week's Amsoil Tech Fact. I'm here with Marty Hart, who is fresh off a victory sweep in Crandon. Marty, I'm interested in shocks. I don't know much about them. Can you tell me what is going on here? Wow, what you have on these particular trucks. This is your, it's called a primary spring, and this controls all your small bumps. You got your bigger spring, it's a larger diameter, and it's actually your secondary, which, you know, you, one's for small bumps and one's for large bumps. And then this is your control shock right here. It controls the suspension as far as how fast it moves through its travel. And you got different sections by bypass tubes that you can adjust during the travel of the suspension. So you can slow the movement of the tires down, speed them up. The kick in the truck is all adjusted through this control shock right here. So this is your primary shock, and then your control shock. Well, he's in a position right now to pick up two more points at the halfway point as we get set for the competition caution. Then they will bunch the drivers back up together again, get it one lap, and then go to the restart. The way he started the first time around, he could be fantastic as the yellow flag gets set to come out. And there it is. So the competition caution is in effect. They will bunch these drivers up again. And the best news is for you fans, you'll see another restart. Okay, I gotta ask you, Todd, who are you picking right now? Right now, I'm gonna say Marty Hart's the guy. Son of Curry and the Toyota right now of Jeff Kincaid locked up in a battle for second place. Marty Hart is all but checked out. Uh, I'll tell you what, Brent's doing this right move. To the inside, Jeff Kincaid, does he have the drive? He does it. He gets it done, Todd, he gets it done. Let's see what Casey does now. It's gonna be tough, because like I said, he's down on horsepower compared to Kincaid, so it's gonna be really tough on Casey, and now he's gonna have to battle it out with Chris Brandt. very game Chris Brandt. Number 82, Chris Brandt in the Lucas Oil Toyota coming up on him out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. So Casey Curry has gone into the hornet's nest right now. And it looks like Brandt's gonna try the inside. Is that just a, is he just setting him up there, Mitch? He's gonna show a little inside line, maybe a little outside line? Oh, it looks like they play those head games, you know, inside, outside, you know. Some say, oh yeah, I was just setting him up. But sometimes it don't work out and they don't play that story in the interview room, you know? <laughs> but yeah, like, oh yeah, I was just setting him up. 
At speeds approaching 90 miles an hour here at Bark River International Raceway. This is the Traxxas Torque Series. Marty Hart is our leader right now in the Pro Light Division as we have got two laps to go. 95 miles an hour going over jumps and whoops, rocks, you name it. Man, this torque racing is awesome in a four-cylinder truck running 95 miles an hour in the dirt. Man, I wish I could do this. If you've got a short attention span, this is the perfect series for you because <laughs> they get in and they get out fast. And look at the distance young Casey Curry carries. Hey, man, Casey came to drive today. I'm telling you, he's got something to prove. Number two, Casey Kerr, the former AMA Supermoto competitor. This kid knows how to drive it, whether it's two or four wheels. Right now, though, he is in a podium position in third place, but the leader continues to be Marty Hart out of Columbia, Louisiana. He has got that Ford hooking up three wins already in 2009. Hey, Marty Hart looks like he's the man today so far. And uh, Jeff Kincaid, though, you, you got to keep an eye on him. If Hart has any loss of concentration or he has any mechanical problems, and we've seen that in before. trouble. Yeah, we've seen that on the Traxxas Torque Series. He'll blow a tire on the last lap. Marty Hart with the white flag out. He is going to try to bring this thing home and put that Ford on the podium in the pro light division. Hey, I see some smoke coming out of Marty's truck. Is he, is he going to be able to make it through the last lap? What did I tell you? We've seen this before, and he is getting pressure now from Jeff Kincaid, number four, the Traxxas Toyota is on the gas from Argonne, Wisconsin. He sees the blood in the water. He does, man. He's, he's hearing these elephant steps from a Toyota behind him in that Traxxas truck. And here he comes. Here he comes. This is Marty for the win. Hart is this losing is for the win. power. And Jeff Kincaid goes right past him. I got to give credit where credit is due. Mitch Covington called it at the competition. Caution, you said Jeff Kincaid would get it done. And he has won four of the last seven pro light races held here. So, Bark River has been very, very good. What a fortuitous step because that man has got flames inside the car. He's got smoke coming out the back. Well, it just goes to show anything can happen in this Traxxas Torque Series. And look at all the smoke. Marty Hart. I know he's got to be disappointed. And he has got flames. He is burning that thing up. He's going to run this thing to the very end because second place is much better than DNF. And I think that's exactly thinking, what's going to happen. Yeah, he's playing a smart day. He needs to get his little self out of that truck right now. Man, it's, it's getting hot in the kitchen there, man. He's got to get out of there. And he will extricate himself from that Traxxas vehicle, which served him so well for just over eight laps. There you see the frustration. He was so close to grabbing all 27 points. And Mitch, you gotta wonder, you know, through eight laps, he looked perfect. Where did he do the damage? I think it's right when he comes through this whoop section right here, and he hits really hard on the back end. But you know what happened? He blew an engine because he told me coming in, this thing's like a ticking time bomb because I'm running a backup set of gears that's geared too low. And he says, I just hope I make it through the race without popping this thing. And sure enough, I think that's what's happened. And what that fire is all about, engine oil flying everywhere probably inside of this hood. And I can guarantee you it caught some kind of spark. Now we got an oil fire, and it's hot inside there. And uh, it's a great thing Marty got out when he did, because it could have been a lot worse. So banner day for the local. Jeff Kincaid gets the victory, gets his Traxxas Toyota across the finish line first, also gets the Oakley Bomb Award. That took place on lap number eight. Our Leah Pruitt is standing by with the winner. Jeff, what a dramatic finish. When did you realize that Marty Hart was having trouble to take advantage of it? You know, right, not to that last lap. We got a little incident at the beginning. It got spun out, and I knew it was going to all, all I could do to get up to him, you know what I mean? I knew that caution, competition caution was coming out, so I was biding my time getting up there front. But uh, once that came out, you know, my guys were telling me, a, a second a lap, a second a lap, you're catching him, you're catching him. I knew the last lap, and when I popped over this hill, and I seen smoke. I'm like, yeah, he pushed it too hard. Casey Curry, third place. You switched places so many times. What do you think about this third place? Yeah, you know, my team worked really hard on this one. I, I got to give it up. You know, last night we changed a tranny and a clutch, and uh, Chad Horde actually gave me the clutch that's in the truck. And, uh, you know, they worked all night and all day today. We actually missed practice working on it. So, uh, you know, it's like a win to us. So we have heard from the podium as we take a look at the overall standings, and we find a tie. Once again, Chad Horde and Jeff Kincaid. Chris Brandt sits in third. Casey Curry, Marty Hart rounding out the top five here in the pro light division. We're getting ready for the pro fours, and the question of the day is, how do you beat Rick Houston? 
Well, hopefully his some of his stuff's getting worn out. <laughs> I know what he's got under him, and he knows what I got under me. And I gotta get him. I gotta pass him. I've gotta get in inside of his head and and, and put some stuff that that I've kind of brought from Pro Light. Luck is the harder you work, the luckier you get. I think it's my job to, to, to try and take him by surprise. So I start next to him. So it should be should be a heads up battle for sure. Put yourself in the drive. Are lining up here at Bark River International Raceway. We are joined now by Pro Two Wheel Drive Voice Leader Ricky Johnson, fresh off the track. A bit of a frustrating day, but you know how important this start is. It is not the land rush; it's the rolling start, but very critical. I had a tough run in the two wheel drive class. Ended up fifth. Off the box, wasn't happy with that. But looking at this Pro Four by Four, they are lined up two by two. They've inverted the top six, so sixth place in points, which is Steve Barlow, will start on the pole, and right next to him is one of his rivals, Kurt LaDuke. And let's don't forget about Johnny Greaves and Scott Douglas in that Amsoil truck. Those two guys have been going at it for a long time, and I think they're going to go at it again today. As the lead truck pulls off to the left, we are set to go. Into the first turn they go, and pushing to the inside, we've got the two of Steve Barlow. This is Duke and Barlow. Already going at it, Todd. Uh, that's setting up for a great race. To the inside, the number seven is Scott Douglas. Look at the oh, 22 Kyle. in there, Johnny Greaves. And the 99, that's oh Kyle my, LaDuke. Kyle LaDuke gets all spun around. Looks like Barlow comes out the winner here, just like a bubblegum machine, man. Who's going to come out? And it's Barlow on top right now. I, th I think the winner in that whole exchange is Johnny Grease. Johnny Grease was our winner yesterday. He comes out in third position. He was saying that he was having trouble with, you know, running out of tear-offs. Now he's in third place with Kurt LeDuc looking to the inside. Hey, LeDuc's already going for it right here. Oh, oh and Greaves slams into Barlow. Oh, that's got to be some controversy. Johnny Greaves just plows into Steve Barlow, knocks the Red Bull out wide, so he slides back to third place. That was a pretty hard hit, and sometimes when you when you hit that hard, it could it could have got a tire on Johnny as well. But now Johnny up front, and the two guys that love each other, Kurt LeDuke and Steve Barlow, second and third. Johnny Greaves, your winner of round number seven yesterday here at Bark River International Raceway. Greaves currently out in front. Let's look at this one more time. Clean racing, gentlemen. Another look on the inside. Here, here comes Barlow squaring off the outside. Johnny looking on the inside. I don't think it was intentional. Steve just came down on him. Looked to me like his rear end just slid around and hit him. I think it was just, just racing, boys. Just Track racing. conditions are an optimum. Ricky, you know they brought in the 3,000 yards of the clay, the track. The drivers all seem to like it. Still a lot of hazards out there with the rocks. Well, definitely. And the good thing is both trucks are running clean. And here comes Scott Douglas looking underneath. Steve Barlow. Uh, Scott having some trouble yesterday. So all trucks are clean, running straight, and, it, and they got a lot of water on the track. Glad to have Ricky Johnson join us fresh off the Pro two-wheel drive action today. Not the finish you wanted, but here in the Pro 4s, these boys are going at it hard. Remember, halfway through, we have the competition caution. The track changes completely, Todd. This first couple of laps, it's really slick. Even you see this uh, Pro 4x4s four, four sliding around a lot. The track is going to come in and get faster and faster, but on top of that, it's going to get dustier. So you got to make sure that you can see the leader to go get him. I like the changes. I think this this track was always a great track, a little more uh, technical than like Crandon and stuff. And uh, the changes that they made, I think, only make it better. I think it makes it better for passing too. This is going to be a good battle to watch between the Amsoil truck of Scott Douglas and the Red Bull truck of Barlow. I'll tell you, these guys, they like to trade paint. It's going to be fun. It's Steve Barlow trying to hold on third place after he got the whole shot and led for much of lap number one. But he has got a rear view mirror full of number seven. And that is the man, Mr. Douglas. You like him, Mitch Covington. Scott Douglas in the Ford at El Cajon, California. Like I say, it's going to be a great race, but right now, this is Johnny Greaves' race to win or lose. And one thing I wanted to say about Johnny, I talked to him last night. He switched over to a manual transmission. Rick Huseman and Johnny Greaves running those Toyotas are the only two guys in the field running a manual transmission. There's a lot of reasons why. We put the stick shift back in for this weekend. We went and tested at Crandon. I was, I was real happy with it. You know, I haven't given up on the automatic just yet because it's it, there's some advantages there, but... Um, we're going to go back to what I know the best. Well, John, looking at Johnny out in front, you can see him banging back and forth. Not a real smooth ride, but a very, very fast ride. Here we see Scott Douglas looking to the inside. You want to stay out of the roost here at Barker because it's really heavy. It fills up your radiators and your vision. 
Yeah, you know, Scott's riding a smart race right now. He's hanging back. Normally, you know, we'd see him in there banging already, but I think he's wanting to make it to the yellow caution before he really pulls out all the stops. Barlow and Douglas battling for 30. Other big story, Rick Huseman. He sits in sixth place right now, and he is the points leader. He has a 27-point advantage, but he's in sixth place, not the start he wanted. He's dominated the Kumo Tires Pro Fours this season, but for Rick Huseman, it is more than a one-man success story. Here's this week's Monster Driver Profile. My brothers and I went out to a race out of Glen Helen, off-road race, and we watched a race around the track, and we figured we could do it. I basically followed in my dad's footsteps and became a, a technician at a Ford dealer, and, and I started racing on the side, and I was taking leave of absences and stuff from work. It really took me a lot to just go for it, but I finally did and just cut the strings. And I think we raced Pro Lights for five full seasons. Johnny Greaves had a, his old Pro 4, and I kind of just slipped right into that seat. It took me it, into my third season before I got my first Pro 4 win. I'm, I'm beside myself. It's unbelievable, you know. To already have two back-to-back -back wins, you know, weekend, you know, it's it's just crazy. And five out of six, it's just, it's unheard of, you know. And we're ecstatic. And look at this. Huseman having problems. Rick Huseman had his three-race win streak broken here yesterday, so he is looking to get back on top of that podium. Yeah, and don't count Rick out. We're going to go to that competition yellow. He's going to get back in the hunt, make a move. He's in fourth already, and he has been really hot shoe this year in Torque Series. I guarantee you he's going to be in this race. A few minutes ago, go back and watch Rick Huseman jump over this big jump. Man, he's doing everything he can to catch his buddy Johnny Greaves. You think he's not wanting this thing? He's never giving up. Look at this. You know, we were talking a while ago about the stick shift in Johnny Greaves. One reason all these other guys are running automatics is because they're running more horsepower. They're running a bigger engine. It pays to run a manual transmission if you got less horsepower because it allows you to keep it on the pipe more with that manual transmission. You just need more gears. Yeah. What you can do is you when you when you what you're saying, Mitch, is that you're able to short stack the gears, bring a closer gear ratio, and also it's a much more efficient through the powertrain to the back wheel. You know, Johnny's running the X track. It was their first win yesterday, so they're very, very proud of that. They come out of England, they do a lot of Formula One and all this a lot of a lot of rally stuff. So now they're a winner in, in uh, torque as well. Well, Johnny Greaves has a 13 career pro 4x4 victories here at Bark River. He is coming around the competition will come out. The bad news for the rest of the field, he's going to pick up two more points because he's the first man of that competition caution. Well, that's the right, That's the reason why Torque went with the, with the inversion. It gives the guy that's back in the points a chance to get these two points and then also win, a possible better chance of winning the race to get back into the points battle. Well, he has looked good all weekend here at Bark Rivers. The yellow comes out. What that means, folks, they will bunch him back up again. They will make one lap at a slow pace with the pace truck out in front, and they will have another one of their great starts here at Bark River. Well, I'll tell you what, if nobody makes a bold move on this restart, Todd, it's over. Johnny Greaves is just looking too strong today, so if they're going to make their move, they better be making it on this restart. We'll find out how the restart shakes down when we return to Bark River for the Traxxas Torque Series here on ESPN. It's pro four. I mean, we're, we're brutal. You know, the, at this track, you know, you go through those rhythm sections down there. Uh, the, the trucks, it can be anywhere. You may have a truck jump a half a car length over on you, and that's just racing in pro four. It's tough out there. We are back to green flag racing here at Bark River. Johnny agrees with about a three car length, truck length lead. And you can see in the back, it's already starting to dust up a little bit, but now we got four trucks squeezed into one small spot. Well, how great is that? How great is the vision and how great is your truck one when you've got no air and all oh. kinds of collision as the 43 Kurt LeDuc gets rammed from behind. Hey, block Rick Huseman. He pulled out and Rick Huseman. He got rammed from behind. Oh, Rick oh, yeah. Huseman. Rick Huseman out on the road, jumps over the block and back in. Now Rick Huseman's got his work cut out for him again. He's still on the track. Hey, this is the thing about the start race, man. They run off the track, they go crazy. But watch him. He's still in the race, and he may still win this race. He absolutely <laughs> dusted the spectators here at Bark River, and Huseman gets a beautiful run up the hill. A lot of banging, a lot of action, man. I love it. Rick Huseman is your points leader out of Riverside, California. He has got that monster Toyota just absolutely flying, but the man right now leading it all, Johnny Greaves looks to be checking out. 
All right, here's the restart one more time as they funneled into that left-hand turn. And I'm sorry, but the 43 of Kurt LeDuc, he absolutely got worked over in that exchange. What happened is Kurt did a slide job very similar to what Jeremy McGrath did to Todd in, in the pro two-wheel two -wheel drive. We take another look at it. Here we see Rick Huseman, very lucky call. He goes over the block wall, cases it a little bit, does kind of a rail slide, comes back on the track and stays in fifth place. That's a beautiful piece of driving there. As we have five laps complete of nine, there you see the vision problem. The two rock stars getting together, 43 and 99. Kurt, Kyle LeDuc, and Kurt LeDuc. Hey, you saw that smoke coming out back there. What is that, Ricky? Well, you might have something might have gotten Jocelyn loose because Rick Huseman was not trying to hit Kurt when he came around there, but had a slingshot off of that burn, nailed Kurt right in the back, might have knocked the oil line loose, but right now Kurt LeDuc's uh, spewing a lot of smoke. Well, Rick Houston, he's trying hard, man, to get through there. He just can't see any daylight. Well, y'all, we got some contact going up the top of that. Now we see Rick Huseman and Kyle Duke going back and forth. Rick Huseman on the inside and has the advantage on the inside. Great racing action. The 99 working his way. That's Kyle Duke pushing Huseman to the outside. Kyle Duke working that outside. You can see how dusty is from those other two. Rick Huseman getting pushed to the outside. Off the oh. track again. And here he comes back in. Johnny Greaves now has the fastest lap time at an 81.3. Hey, well, there's no doubt. Everybody else is slugging it out back there. Got dirt in their eyes, man. It's got to be hurting. Johnny Greaves out there in the rollout lane, man, going to town. Johnny Greaves is absolutely flying, but this is the great battle. Rick Hughes oh. looking to the inside, looking in, and something wow. happened to Kyle LeDuc. He's pulling off to the outside. Hey, Mark, that's not the thing, because I'm telling you, Houston's got the speed. No question about it, he has won six of seven Oakley Bomb Awards this season. That is proof enough that he has got the speed. Well, you can see it's so dusty out there, Todd, because a lot of these drivers have been knocked off course. They did water the course, but they can't water the whole hundred acres here. <laughs> so with Rick Huseman getting knocked off the track back and forth, a lot of dust in the area right now. Johnny Greaves, number 22, continues to lead. Then it's Douglas, Huseman, Barlow, and Kurt LeDuc. Kyle LeDuc has now slid back to sixth. I tell you, Houston just been making his own track today, boys. I tell you, he's been running all over the place, and it's going to work out for him. They're going to need to buy a few more acres. Real impressed with Steve Barlow right now. He's been back, beat up and banged around and knocked around, but he's still in the hunt. You know, Steve's had a lot of hard luck, but he keeps driving faster and faster. He is a desert specialist, so maybe this dust is helping him out. No question about it. Johnny Greaves, your leader. Douglas sits in second. Number 36, Rick Huseman. He is the points leader. He sits currently in third place. Man, I'm telling you, Johnny. Johnny Greaves is checking out, man. He is checking out. His lap time looks to me like it's like two seconds faster than everybody else. He must have cut the track when nobody's looking. <laughs> <laughs> After a seemingly endless bad luck streak, Johnny Greaves looked for redemption at Bark River. Yesterday, he found it. Great action in Pro 4 once again early on. Scott Douglas looked good, but he had a flat. Then, this is the pass for the lead. Johnny Greaves over Steve Barlow. This is a great clean pass by Johnny Greaves for the lead. Once he gets out in front, it's curtains for everybody, but Johnny Greaves here at Bark River. Points leader Rick Huseman was trying to make a furious comeback. He wouldn't get it done. Johnny Greaves gets his second victory of the year in Pro 4. Well, another situation right there, you see Rick going off the side of the track. Even though we can see down through it, the dust at the track level, you can't see. It's very, very frustrating. You know, like I said, the guys here at the Bark River Lions Club have done a great job, but with this much horsepower beating up this track, it's hard to see. White flag is out. We are on the final lap for the Kubo Tires Pro 4x4, and can anyone catch Johnny Greaves? Johnny Greaves looks like he's out in front and going. There is Scott Douglas. I heard the crowd scream in the background, and uh, Scott Douglas looking very, very strong, but Rick Huseman, He's coming on strong. Hey, Douglas trying to reel in Greaves. We are on the last lap. Can he get it done, Mitch? No way, man. Look at the lead he's got. What kind of question is that? And he's got a huge lead. You're watching the same thing I am. Hey, this is, this is torque racing. Anything can happen. That's Look my Johnny point Greaves. exactly. Look at Johnny Grease out there taking his time, doesn't want to break anything. But Johnny Grease is, his best lap is three seconds faster than Douglas' fastest lap. So something has to go wrong for him to beat Johnny. I got to talk to everybody, Johnny Grease, because he's letting all his secrets out. He ought to back it off, make it look close or something. They're going to be after him now. He knows he's got that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the Rick, blue group forming there, and Greaves just works the perfect line. Rick Hughes has been coming in strong. We got a couple more corners. This is the battle for second place. It is Douglas and Huseman. Huseman, number 36, who has had an epic charge to the front of the pack. At one time, had the fastest lap, no longer. This is a good race right here for second. Who's it going to be? 
officially your winner, Mr. Greaves, gets the victory. Johnny Greaves looks like he will sweep. Mark River, Douglas will hold on for second. And Huseman, the points leader, quite possibly played it smart and settled for third. I don't think he settled for anything. <laughs> you know, he was going, he went off the track three times, not intentional, you can't see out there. So my hat's off to Rick Huseman. Came, came from that number one spot, all the way back in six, and, and is on the box. The final results of the Kumo Tires Pro 4x4 race. It is Johnny Greaves who gets the victory, followed by Scott Douglas, Rick Huseman, Steve Barlow, Kyle Duke rounding out your top five. Let's send it down to Leah Pruitt, who's with our winner. Congratulations, Johnny Greaves, on your victory sweep for this weekend. Do you think it had anything to do with your new BFG compound or maybe your manual transmission? Uh, it had to do with a whole bunch of people working really damn hard to put us back in the winner's circle, you know? Two wins in a row, two bombs, Monster Pato Automy, Toyota, BF, all you guys, we're putting it together, we're making it happen. Second place for you, Scott. Did you have any trouble holding off Huseman? Well, I tell you, he had a strong run at the end there, and uh, Dustin in some spots was, was pretty crazy, but uh, he was coming on strong, and uh, Rick always runs you clean, so I knew if he got there, uh, he'd have to get around me, and, and uh, I tell you, I was just focused on Johnny in that last lap. I made a couple big mistakes and got a big lead, and, and Rick caught up too, but the Amazon Kumo F-150 is just wild today. Rick, it looks like that race for you was quite aggressive. Can you tell me about the conflict you had? Wow, I can't believe that. Uh, I think I got a little Duke sandwich out there. It was, it was unreal. It, and then I had some of my own wild rides out there going off the big jump and going over the wall. And I, know, I had a frustrating race, so I was just trying to catch back up. So after eight rounds, the points look like this in the Kumo Tires Pro 4x4 division. It's Rick Huseman over Johnny Grease by 20 points. Folks, our next race Sunday, August 16th, 11.30 a.m. Eastern from Bark River on ESPN2. On behalf of Ricky Johnson, Mitch Covington, Leah Prude, I'm Todd Ayers saying so long from Michigan.